Good afternoon folks from Jeff's Little Engine Service. Today we're going to be tangling with this uh, Honda lawnmower here. It's the old type with nylon uh, deck or the plastic deck, whatever the heck it's made out of. It's a Honda Harmony HRB215. Uh, one of these old school Honda engine designs. Um, it'll start with starting fluid, but it will not stay running. I have already removed the uh, the float bowl there and cleaned it out and put it back together and that didn't improve the situation so what we need to do is remove this carburetor and clean out the main jet inside so let's go ahead and get started looks like the air filter is in good shape and we have two 10 millimeter nuts to remove I should say three nuts bolt We also have this bolt that we have to remove. All right. And this hose here is just a breather hose. It'll pull right off. Okay. Pretty dirty situation. Uh, I think the first thing we should do is turn off the fuel line. Now I've already cleaned out the gas tank um, and the fuel line to make sure that that's all clean. Um, but we're, we're still having the same problem so it's time to remove this carburetor and clean it out a little better. And usually if you just twist this real good, oh you can get it off. Careful not to get any dirt in there. And this top linkage can be removed. Um, So we want to, this carburetor won't move, we want to break it up, break it free. There we go. Now that we have the carburetor free, we can rotate the throttle valve there, pull the linkage right out, remove that spring, and should be able just to pull it off now. Um, you know sometimes actually what we need to do is loosen up this bolt, these two bolts, uh, so this bracket oh, loosens up a bit so we can get the carburetor out enough. Right, so now it's loose enough. I think we can get this carburetor, maybe. Loosen it up a little bit more. Almost, be careful not to break anything. This is plastic here, so maybe I just need to take this bolt all the way out. There we go. And now if you rotate the carburetor like this, it comes right off. Don't forget how this was in place. And I'll just leave this loose for now. And you can see the gasket there uh, got damaged, so we'll have to make another one of those. All right, let's get into this bad boy and see what we have going on. I think I'm gonna clean it off first. And you have this uh, little metal gasket here to keep track of. And just like that, we are cleaned up and ready to take this carburetor apart. Trusty 10 millimeter again. And I know that the carburetor should be clean uh, because I, like I said, I already cleaned out the float bowl. And it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, I do see some contamination in there. 
See that? It's like crustified stuff. So let's take out the hinge pin. Take off the float and you see how that's attached. Um, yeah, the float, the float definitely has some stuff on it. So we're going to have to soak it. Scrub it with a brush, get it all cleaned off. And inside the carburetor here we also have some gunk, see what I mean? Got to clean all that off. But otherwise it's fairly clean. And where the main jet is located is in here. So you'll need a long skinny screwdriver. You can see it's all gunked up. And this is real easy to strip out so make sure you have a good tight fitting screwdriver before you start cranking down on it. Yeah, there we go. You can tell it's gooey just by the way it's unscrewing. You can see the crud in there. So to get this out, sometimes you can just tap on it like this. Um, but if you can see inside, you can also push it down um, with a screwdriver ah. yeah it's stuck in there pretty good oh there comes the main jet uh, we still have the nozzle that's up in here that we have to push out oh man that sucker's stiff but it's starting to come out I think I'm going to spray some something in there. So the nozzle is still up in there that we need to get out. Be cautious when using carburetor cleaner because if you get any on this rubber gasket, the gasket may swell up and then it's uh, hard to get back in there. I'm going to spray a little bit of cleaner down in there. And you see I have a pick that I'm going to uh, reach in from above and poke it down as far as I can that thing is really is stuck in there but it's important that we do get it out there it is haha -ha. boy well you can see why it was stuck in there it's totally boogered up but you can see the nozzle hopefully you could see the nozzle has a bunch of tiny little holes in it and you need to make sure that all those are cleared out as well as down through the center uh, goes all the way through the tube but definitely definitely make sure those tiny little holes are cleared out and then on your main jet here you just have the one hole that goes up through the middle of it but you want to make sure it's good and clean and uh, you can just I can oh and you can tell just by looking that that little stinker uh, main jet there is plugged so let's get this cleaned out what I usually use is just some copper wire clean it out poke it through and begin brushing off all of this stuff. Use a little bit of carburetor cleaner on the toothbrush here. Yeah, it's cleaning up pretty easily. And a Q-tip to get down into there. We'll make sure that's all nice and clean. You can see there's dirt down in there. and all the nooks and crannies clean off looks like there's like a powder film on everything that you want to clean off it's going to take me a while it's time to take off this gasket uh, and make a new one hopefully it's not going to be too complicated and i've worked it loose to try to get it off in one piece so i can uh, use it as a template to make the new one. 
Yeah, pretty good. And with the piece here, I can definitely match it up and uh, use it as a template. I want to make sure to get rid of all the old gasket on here. Be careful not to scrape anything because it's plastic. Well, my gasket didn't turn out too bad. It should work. Yep. That should work. I want to make sure to clean off this gasket surface as well. I've had the float and the float bowl soaking in carburetor cleaner overnight, so hopefully it's all cleaned up. Hey, shut up! Darn bird. Anyways, uh, I got the carburetor all cleaned out, and the uh, float was soaking overnight. It's turned out pretty clean, so that's good. No more of that flaky stuff on there. As I mentioned, I made sure to clean out every little uh, hole and orifice in these little pieces so we can go back together. We've got uh, the nozzle that goes in first, like this. Then you got your main jet. Oh, put my main jet in upside down. And you don't want to tighten it down too tight because you can uh, strip things out. Good and snug though. Yeah. And we'll put this little doodad back in place. The spring goes on the bottom like so. See, everything's nice and clean. Right, and I made sure to clean down into the the seat area with a Q-tip. Go back together. Oops. And I can put the hinge pin back into place. I think we're doing pretty good. Gasket's still in place. We're ready to go back together. You see the float bowl turned out pretty clean. Float bowl goes back on. Make sure it's seated good. And you don't want to over tighten the float bowl bolt. You can strip things out. So the carburetor's looking all clean and ready to go back on. Let's go ahead and put the choke linkage on first. And see if we can get this carburetor into place. There we go. Put this bolt back in. And should be able to put this linkage right in place here. And finally, the spring. There we go. Okay. I see some stuff up in this fuel line I want to clean out. Don't want that ending up in the carburetor. Okay. So yeah, we just need to tighten things back up here. Get this fuel line on. Turn the 
gas on, check for leaks. I think we're doing all right. I don't see any leaks so far. And we'll put this gasket, this metal spacer gasket back in place. Check the choke, check the throttle. All right. It's a good idea to tighten these two uh, nuts up first before you tighten this one. I usually go back and forth here to try to make sure it gets mounted up evenly. So, pretty snug. All right. One thing I do want to check is that the um, when I go to full choke is that the choke um, plate closes all the way. I don't know if we can see any. Yeah, it looks like it does. Can you see that? That's full choke. Choke on, choke off. Choke on, choke off. I'm gonna leave the air filter off of it for the test here. See how it goes. Keep your fingers crossed. Perfect. All right, I just turned the choke off. We'll see if it'll idle. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I'm gonna let it warm up a bit. All right, let's rev it up. Yeah, that works. So if you noticed, even when I revved it up, um, it didn't rev up all the way. So I can show you how we can fix that real quick here. But to get it to rev up more, you wanna find the governor spring, which is actually actually that spring there. And you need to uh, make it a little bit tighter. Um, one of the ways you can do that is just by bending uh, the spring a little bit. Um, sometimes you can bend the tab that it's attached to uh, to get it to rev up more, but it doesn't look like we can do that in this case, so I'm just going to put a little crimp in that spring. Basically makes that spring a little bit shorter. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so can you see that? All right, can you see that? I put a little crimp in that spring, which is making that spring just a little bit tighter, which will uh, allow it to rev up more now, hopefully. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's much better. I think that'll work. 